Awesome. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Dev DeVrat. I am an Associate Dean of Admission here at Reed College, and I'm excited uh, to, to be here with you all and uh, to learn more about the music program. This is one that I was really excited about um, uh, moderating because um, I'm also uh, a really uh, interested in this program and, and one that I get a lot of questions about when I'm on the road. So um, I'm really excited to hear, hear a little bit more about this program. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Mark uh, to do his introduction and then uh, go into the the presentation of, of the music program. Great, thanks very much, Dev. Um, good to see everyone here and looking forward to um, sharing about my department, which I'm very proud of, and also hearing uh, your questions and uh, interests if you wanna share those. So um, again, my name is Mark Burford. Um, I'm a music historian um, and the music department has four um, faculty members. I'm the music historian. Um, Morgan Luker is an ethnomusicologist, which is basically a, um, a, a does cultural study, a social scientific study of music. Um, Shohei Kobayashi conducts our choirs and also teaches um, uh, uh, theory. Uh, and Bora Yoon, um, who is the newest member of the department, is a, a composer, creative artist, performer, um, and uh, she teaches creative, basically creative practice um, in the department. So, um, and I'll, I'll give you more of a sense of that. Um, another member of the department, important wing of the department is our performance wing of the department, which is in some ways one of the biggest kind of units in the, in the whole college. Monica Ouchi, who is a pianist, um, uh, runs our private instruction program and basically oversees our performance ensembles as well or coordinates uh, coordinates those. Um, so yeah, I give you that breakdown because I think that gives you a sense of the range of things we do in the department, that there are um, kind of these uh, domains that are interconnected, but also offer pathways through the department depending on your interest. So we... Um, we have music majors uh, who major in um, either creative practice or ethnomusicology or music history, um, but we actually serve an enormous number of students. I would estimate probably 10% of the students at Reed are involved in some way in the music department, um, either taking private in lessons, playing in the orchestra, playing in the jazz ensemble, singing in the choirs, um, various things. So the way I would say that what we do in the music department is we think about what kinds of questions and what types of engagement one could have with music. So there's a lot of kinds of ways in which you can engage with music, kinds of questions that you can ask of music and that music asks of you. You can ask music historical questions about stylistic history or historical context uh, about a piece of music. Um, you can think social scientifically in ethnomusicology, thinking about cultural practice. Um, some students do work on ethnography where they're uh, observers or participant observers with various scenes um, and do research uh, and um, uh, independent projects on that. Um, performance obviously offers, poses questions, how one gets from the beginning to the end of a piece of music, uh, interprets it, what kinds of interpretive questions, what kind of technical questions um, are posed when we play a piece of music. Um, creative practice, what does it mean to start with nothing and produce a piece of music um, or some sort of sound art, sound sculpture, whether it's notated or electroacoustic, um, so all these different ways, music theory, what does it mean to analyze a piece of music and make sense of what the notes or musical sound um, is doing and how might one might explain that. So we try to, um, we, we have kind of foundational courses in theory, in history, in ethnomusicology, um, but we also kind of encourage students to find their own path through the department. Um, I, I want to play this piece of music, or I'm really interested in studying this part of the world, or thinking about ethnomusicology. Um, let us know what you want to do, um, because we're a small department, but I think that makes us also nimble in terms of the ways we can accommodate student interests. Um, and I think we've done that quite well um, over the years. You had students who 
um, are interested in conducting and maybe want to conduct the orchestra uh, or students who are interested in doing solo work. We have a, a concert series known as Fridays at four, um, maybe six or six or five or six per semester where students say they're working on a piece and they want to perform for an audience. We do that. That's open to the public. Um, that's a really important part of the department as well, too. So that's all to say, make us an offer. Tell us what you're interested in. Um, if we don't do it, we can either find a way to do it um, or we also have summer fellowships say that, you know, you don't offer these sort of sorts of classes, but I would really love to study audio production or I want to study a particular repertory of music during the summer. So we offer um, um, uh, summer fellowships um, for that as, as, as well. Um, so I, I often tell students that your read career is four year, uh, four years and three summers. So summers are really important, I think, in terms of taking advantage of scholarship or internship um, or other kinds of um, opportunities to pursue things uh, that you that you want to do. Sometimes the summer is good for just recharging and chilling out, too. Um, but it's also an opportunity um, to, to take on other opportunities um, beyond beyond read. So that's a kind of general overview. I'm sure I left out some things, but we can fill in those gaps with your questions. Yeah, great. Um, awesome. Uh, the first question that we've got in the chat, uh, the box here is, um, is there a performance major, um, like a performance specific major? That's a really good question and a timely question because historically the answer is no, we haven't had a performance major per se. There have been students, my thesis students this very semester, uh, who's a pianist and she's writing a thesis on collaborative piano. Uh, and just last Friday had her recital of music that she writes about in the thesis. Um, so that's happened in the past. We had a student who was writing about um, uh, Hugo Wolf, a German late romantic composer of songs and did a thesis on his songs and gave a recital. Someone else who um, played a piano piece, Ravel's Tombeau de Couperin, and did a recital connected with the thesis, but it wasn't technically part of the thesis. Now we are, however, thinking about the idea. And I think I would be surprised if we don't go in this direction of doing something along the lines of a performance thesis. The challenge with a performance thesis, but not an insurmountable one is that obviously if you're working on your performance, some the thesis has to have some sort of written component. So even we have what we call creative theses. So say you want to study composition, you write a piece, and then you have some sort of written component connected to the thesis that's not a full length written thesis that happens in creative writing, it happens in visual art, it happens in theater, it happens in dance as well too. But we don't do a performance thesis, even though we do a composition or creative thesis. So that is something that I would be surprised if in the next couple of years, we don't do that. The obstacle, or one of the, the 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 logistical part of that is that if you're doing your, you'd basically have co-thesis advisors. So you would have an advisor that's working with you on the musical performance, and an advisor who's working with you on the written um, the written portion. But that's not. Um, I, I think we're definitely trending in that direction to be able to to do that within the next next couple of years. So I would suspect that by the time you graduate from Reed, there would be a performance major in the music department. And you, you brought up the thesis. Um, do you mind elaborating a little bit more about how do students who are majoring in music um, at Reed approach the thesis, selecting advisors for the thesis, um, you gave some uh, a couple of examples there about the uh, of music majors and their theses, but um, do you mind elaborating a little bit more about what it is as a whole, and then um, sort of how does that um, sort of unfold itself in in your department? Sure. So the thesis is a year long um, research and writing project in which you are paired with a faculty member who basically functions as your thesis advisor. Um, you meet with them usually weekly uh, to go from gestation of the idea to developing a proposal 
to working through the first semester where you produce a chapter of writing to the end of the second semester when you're um uh when you complete the thesis so um so it is a it is a it is a chunk of writing and you do have a very close relationship with the the advisor you're working with it's definitely a collaboration in that sense although you you do all the writing um but um it's uh in terms of thesis advising you would maybe we'll get a sense of your interests over the course of the four years uh, or th their first three years um and usually you get a sense of what people want to do whether they want to do really two kinds of theses uh what we call sometimes a paper thesis which is an entire written thesis so for instance, um, I have my other thesis student this semester, or one of them um, is writing a thesis on the indie pop scene in Olympia, Washington. It sounds really narrow. And so you really start digging into it and do the research, and then you can actually produce a full length thesis, usually in the range of anywhere between 70 and 100 pages, if it's a written thesis. You know, I think 70, 75 pages is pretty typical for a thesis, um, but there's no no prescribed limit for that. Um, so you want you work with your thesis advisor, and it's usually you say, I want to work with this professor, or it often is just kind of logical. If someone's doing an ethnographic thesis, they would work with Morgan, our ethnomusicologist, if they're doing something more historical. I do a lot of pop music theses, but also classical music theses as well, too, um, concert music theses. Um, if you're doing something that's more compositional or creative, you might work with Bora, for instance. Um, so that's how that that pairing works. And then at the end of the thesis year, there is what's called a oral examination, which is 90 minutes that involves four faculty members or combination of faculty and staff members. Dev, maybe you've been on theses orals before. Um, but uh, and then basically 90 minute, we all read your thesis document and then um uh and then discuss it um so it's not an interrogation you're you're basically going to be the expert in the room um but it's a nice reversal of roles where you're kind of speaking with your um and with your faculty your professors as a colleague in a sense to discussing your work so it's a really um i think i really enjoy i really enjoy that that process and how students take ownership uh, of 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 that work so I don't know if people have follow-up questions to that, but that's essentially how the thesis um, thesis works. Right. Thank you. Um, another question from the the group: um, Can you um, talk a little bit more about your role as a music historian? What does that entail? What does that mean? Well, see, it's the typical the 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 fancy pants version of music historian is musicology. So I'm a musicologist, but I just music history is kind of what I do. Also because I think I really identify as a historian. I'm interested in thinking about repertory, but also the kinds of questions, social questions, cultural questions, political questions that are raised by um, um, by the study um, study of music and situating in it in its historical um, context. So I would say in terms of the classroom, um, the courses I teach, are going to reflect my interest. So I teach courses um, on um, my thesis, my, or my dissertation was on uh, a German composer, composer named Johannes Brahms. So I'm interested in 19th century, late 18th, 19th century uh, concert music, um, particularly in Austro, an Austro-German world. But I've also since um, then, um, or alongside that, I'm also a historian of African American um, uh, music as well too. So I I I wrote a book on a gospel singer named Mahalia Jackson, and so that was the the research I do. But it's interesting. The research kind of I think figures into the courses you teach. So I teach classes on on African American. History. I'm teaching a class right now um, called Africa and the Black Musical Imagination, how African-American musicians have been inspired by, kind of grappled with, thought through their relationship with the African continent and how that shows up um, in, in music in various ways from jazz musicians in the 50s kind of drawing on um, 
uh, African, various forms of African music to Beyonce's Bla Black is King, which is really this kind of love letter to the African continent as well, too. So there's a surprising amount of repertory. So I'm able to teach classes that I can, which I love. One thing I love about Reed is that we don't do textbooks. Um, we give real read it, real readings from journals and books and work through them together. Um, so my courses reflect my interests, uh, um, uh, which I think is a big part of um, part of what I um, part of what I do with students. And then also when students work on theses, I'm able to draw on my experience on what it means to design a project, what a research project looks like, um, use that kind of more practical um, uh, thinking about process um, in terms of, and I think my experience kind of writing helps inform how I teach other students to write and think about writing and formulating a research question and and, and articulating a thesis. So, um, so I think it's it's very characteristic of one's scholarship and one's teaching to be kind of in dialogue at Reed. Great, thank you. Um, I know Reed offers a music minor as well. Do you mind unpacking that a little bit? What is uh, What classes do the minor students take? How does scheduling work to make sure that students are taking the classes they need to in order to do that minor? Yeah, so the music minor is fairly new, but we actually have quite a few students who are involved in the minor. We deliberately designed the minor to not be a mini major. Um, the major, you're kind of covering a range of ground, um, history classes, ethnomusicology classes, theory classes, performance classes, creative classes. Um, but uh, um, the minor is much more um, flexible. So one could take a music minor and have a very, very different curriculum than another music minor. The music, the music minor, all it requires is five units in music, one unit of which needs to be a 300 level course. That's really it. So one can imagine taking all classes with no music analysis, not even looking at a score um, and focusing on ethnomusicology classes. One can imagine uh, a thesis that's just a performance thesis um, or in addition to the 300 level course um, where you can fill your um, requirements uh, with performance classes. Um, that's capped with a 300 level course or some sort of combination in, be in between. I think most students take a mix of things. They'll take, just look at the catalog and see what courses interest them. Um, just make sure you take that 300 level course and you're set. Some students kind of come in and say, I'm going to be a music minor. Some students just kind of look up and say, you know what? I've just, I've taken five music classes. All I need is, or I've taken four and all I need is one more and I can complete a minor. So that happened to a lot of students who just realized they've been taking music classes and they have enough classes for a minor. But yeah, five classes, one of which is 300 level and congratulations, you're a music minor. Awesome. Um, what about conducting? Uh, is, is there opportunities to be a music conductor, whether academically or otherwise? That's a great question. I mean, the answer I think is yes. Um, in the, we haven't until last year, or in the last couple of years, I would say, had a formal conducting class. Um, Shohei Kobayashi is an excellent conductor and is interested in the pedagogy, the teaching of conducting. Um, so he taught a class which was called Music Theory and Practice. Um, which kind of focused on conducting and score reading. Um, I suspect that's going to be a probably a spinoff class um, where we're kind of reorganizing our theory sequence um, right now. Um, but in the past, there have been students who have done independent studies in conducting um, with former professors um, and who have, I can think of a couple examples, who have conducted in concert the orchestra, maybe a movement of a piece, um, or the 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 one of the choirs, the collegium. Collegium is our chamber choir, and then there's a general. Cho we have basically have three choral ensembles: a big chorus, a non-audition choir, which is a non-audition choir, collegium, which is a chamber choir, which is auditioned, and then Shohei recently added a treble voices ensemble. Um, 
uh, mostly women's voices, but higher voice ensemble. Um, so there are opportunities. That's a perfect example of if you let us know you're interested in conducting, that's something we can absolutely, um, absolutely make happen. So um, please do let us know if you have interest in that. Great, thank you. What are extracurricular opportunities uh, available for students who like music, uh, but who'll be majoring in something else? Um, this particular person participates in concert and uh, marching wind ensemble and jazz ensemble uh, in high school currently, and they wish to continue music as a hobby. Yeah, I think that describes probably 85 to 90% of the students that are involved in the music department. We actually have the number of our majors is not um, astronomical, um, but the number of students involved in, in, in performance. Um, in fact, some of our most serious students, in fact, I would say a lot of our most serious music students um, and advanced students are non-majors. That's very, very typical. So in terms of the ensembles we have, we have an orchestra um, uh, that's conducted by John Carlo Castro. We have the choruses, as I mentioned, conducted by Shohei. We have a jazz ensemble conducted and directed by um, John Savage, uh, who is a multi-instrumentalist, mostly a reed player. He plays flute and he also plays alto and soprano saxophone as well, too. Um, we recently added a new ensemble, which we call Roots, uh, which is basically an Americana ensemble, which is basically a bluegrass ensemble that's directed by one of our viola teachers, Kenji Bunch, who's done a lot of bluegrass and folk um, folk music ensemble. That's a really great addition to the department because there, there are always students who are interested in old timey music or traditional music um, who kind of had, had to organize that on their own. Um, and we've made it now an ensemble and next year it's gonna be a course you can actually enroll in. Um, so those are opportunities. There are, I mean, some are auditioned, um, but they're not, there is, there's nothing in the department that's restricted to music majors. That's, most people are surprised by that because a lot of places, certain things are only for music majors, but nothing in the department from ensembles to classes is restricted to music majors. So um, you're welcome to participate in that. You can perform in the Fridays at four. The Fridays before, at four are usually mostly non-music majors. Um, so uh, you're welcome to partake of any activity in the department um, extracurricularly, or you can take it for credit. Um, you can also get credit for lessons um, for some of the ensembles as well, too. So you, you can decide how you, how you want to take those courses. Great, thank you. Um, that was actually a really good segue uh, into the next question, which is what does the audition process typically look like? Um, this particular individual is a violinist and a drummer. Uh, however, they have not had experience uh, with the timpani, the, vi the vibraphone and other percussion uh, instruments. Yeah, it really, it, it depends on ensemble to ensemble. And I can't speak for all of them because I'm not sure how, for instance, Kenji runs the, the bluegrass ensemble. Um, orchestra, you play for John Carlo, you show up the first day and you play for him and he will let you know if um if you're if you're in. Um for collegium, there is also uh that depends on how many spots there are. Some students are in collegium all four years. So if there's a graduation in the alto section and there's a position available. Um, you would audition for that. But the size of the ensemble also expands and contracts depend on, depending on the number of singers and the number of voices we have. Um, jazz ensemble, I think you also play for John. John is very good. John Savage, the director of jazz ensemble, is very good at finding ways for, to accommodate both experienced musicians and also students who maybe, we have actually a student this very year who was a played a lot of classical piano, was a strong pianist, came in last year um, and said, you know what, I really want to learn how to play jazz. I've never played it, but I like the music. Took lessons for a year and played in the jazz ensemble concert this last fall and was was phenomenal. It was just, he was really amazing um, and is now a kind of key member of the ensemble. So, you know, our, our I guess I would say our, our um, our philosophy is we kind of try to meet students where they are and see 
where they want to um, where they want to be and help them get to where they want to be to do the things um, to do the things they want to do. We really it's it's a rare occasion where we just completely turn away anybody. I mean, we, we pretty much don't do that. In fact, the jazz ensemble we created, and I hope we do it again next year, a kind of jazz fundamentals course, because there are students who are, I've played saxophone, but I've only played in wind band. Um, and, but I want to learn a little bit about jazz idiom, played in the fundamentals group, and then kind of graduated up to the, um, to the main um, jazz ensemble. So, um, there, there is an entry point pretty much for any level um, uh, you want to you want to start participating. And I'm going to jump ahead to a question someone else asked, which is also related to auditioning. But is there uh, specific audition materials that they have to prep? And if so, where would they find that? Or can they can they typically bring sort of whatever they have prepared uh, to an audition? Yeah, it's pretty much BYOM, bring your own music. Um, so there's not repertory you have to master. So if it's something that you feel like you play well, um, uh, you would play that at the uh, at the audition. The 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 audition for Collegium, I I I don't know what Shohei is doing for that now. Whether there's a sight singing component, I I I don't know, so I won't speculate. Um, but um, but no, there's not like repertory that you have to learn um, in advance. One thing I will say about about performance is a really great opportunity. We have a fellowship um, called the Kaufman Fellowship. Uh, and that is a merit-based fellowship specifically for first year students. Um, the auditions are held in at the beginning of the spring semester. Um, so you have the fall to kind of brush up. You audition and if you're granted one of the fellowships, you get free lessons for all four years at your time at Reed. Um, so those are competitive fellowships, but, you know, sometimes we can accommodate more than one person, but it's usually one. So basically there's a Kaufman fellow in each grade for the people who have, um, who auditioned, um, and, um, and, uh, for, for that particular fellowship. So that's something to bear in mind if you're, um, if you're interested in auditioning for um, one of those fellowships. Um, which is also a great segue to the next question, but uh, do music majors have to pay extra fees in order to take private lessons? Yeah, music um, music lessons um, are, and I, I'm trying to think about, I'm not going to guess at the number. It's on the website. I'm trying to, I don't want to give the wrong number. Um, but yeah, it's per lesson. Um, but there are, there's a very generous scholarships as well too. Um, um, and the policy has changed recently to get even more scholarships. So it's a rare occasion that someone is not able to take lessons um, because of um, uh, for financial reasons. We we we, we usually are able to find the money um, to do that. Um, we also have um, uh, uh, students who. Um, Music, or that's what I was going to say. Music majors um, do get uh, free lessons for at least part of their time there. I should have these policies kind of more um, in my brain. Um, but music majors are entitled to one set of lessons um, for at least a couple of years. I do know that. Um, but that information is also on our website. Um, if you go to the, the music department website, it'll give you all the details about the lessons, but um, yes, they are they are paid, but there are there are quite a quite um, ample scholarships for that as well too. Great, thank you. And I did put the link uh, to the website um, sure. that talks about the private lessons um, in the chat box if anyone's curious. Um, is it possible to be in the ensemble uh, year round or? Are they something that people only take for like maybe one semester um, or just for the whole year? Can they do it all four years? It's totally up to you. Some people dip in and dip out. Um, there are people who are who play in the orchestra, sing in the choirs all four years of their, of their time every semester. So it's really up to you. Um, we also have chamber music ensembles uh, as well, too. So let's say you want to 
you know, you, you, you meet someone that you're, you're a pianist and you meet a violinist and a cellist and you want to get together that actually happened where there was a, a piano trio of they're all first year students, uh, a pianist, a violinist and a cellist. And they kind of formed a piano trio and played together um, for all four years or most of their time at Reed too. We kind of look at chamber music very broadly. So it can be we consider bluegrass ensemble chamber music. Chamber music is basically just one on a part. So a rock band could be chamber music. Um, um, a world music ensemble can be chamber music. So, um, so we have a, a we have a range of options and options for that. But your your participation as much as you want. Now, credit wise, you can only use three credits toward your thirty um, for. Um, uh, um, 30 units to graduate, 30 credits to graduate. You can only use three of those for performance. So that's the, you're capped on the number of credits you can get, but you're not capped on participation, if that makes sense. Great, thank you. Does the, uh, does the orchestra have a wind section? It does have a wind section. I mean, we don't recruit at Reed, so we kind of are flexible in terms of or responsive, I should say, in terms of what we get from from year to year. But we definitely do have a wind section. I went to orchestra rehearsal just to sit in last night, as a matter of fact, and then it, it was just it was just a string rehearsal last night. Um, but there is definitely a wind section. We have some really nice, um, really nice winds. We have we've had a kind of crop of of flautists recently. Um, but yeah, we do have a wind section that. And John Carlo, the conductor. Um, uh basically uh will kind of fill in he's able to, he's also a composer so he is able to rearrange things to um to make sure it fits the ensemble uh the players that we have but but and we also have wind players too it's always great to take lessons too alongside orchestra just to keep your chops up um but um there's definitely a there's definitely a wind section i would say the orchestra is usually in the range of 30 or so some semesters it's bigger some semesters smaller but that's ballpark of how many how big the orchestra is right now awesome thank you and then um following up on the ensemble are are, are these ensembles all student led uh or staff led um, which it sounds like they're staff led but i don't want to make that assumption um if they are staff led are there musical groups that students have orchestrated um, would that be something that a student could attempt to start? And I think this also sort of ventures into the question around like student groups that are outside of these ensembles, um, if, if those exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good question. I, I would say it, it's interesting because there are official read um, musical activities, performance opportunities. Um, and then there's there's a lot of student bands on on campus. I mean, there's Read After Dark is kind of a is kind of a a, a a mystery to me because students do a lot of organizing and playing on their own for Ren Fair, which you may have heard about. There's a kind of I think it's still this kind of bubble that is kind of the band bubble where you can go in and just listen to bands. Um, so there is a music czar for Ren Fair who organizes the music for Ren Fair. The music department has nothing um, to do with that. Just the my thesis student, so all this stuff happened today. My thesis student, the one who's working on indie pop, he also does a lot of organizing on campus and has organized an open mic um, or, or a kind of jam or is kind of programming at the coffee shop we have here, Paradox. Um, it has a Thursday night kind of um, musical um, musical events. Um, so students do a lot of organizing on their own. There are student houses and their bands will play student parties, that sort of thing. I know his band did that last weekend. Um, there are opportunities in the Performing Arts Resource Center uh, to, if you want to record something, uh, you know, it's not a, not a tech, uh, tricked out music studio, but if you want to record some, there are opportunities to record. He was actually, he's recording a, um, uh, his his band tracking his band, um, so that's a really good resource, the Performing Arts Resource Center, which is basically the music library. So all our scores, CDs, DVDs are there, but they also have equipment there. And there's a dedicated tech person, Joe Janaga, who assists um, who assists with that. 
The one group that's kind of in between kind of totally autonomous student groups and the department, although they're autonomous, pretty much autonomous, there's a um, an acapella group called the Herodotones, a pun from Hume 110, um, that's totally student run. Um, student groups, I mean, as is always the case, the, the, you know, the they, they rise and fall on the kind of um, organizational prowess of the student that leads it. Uh, but um, but they've been really active. They have a concert every semester, the Herodotones. They use a lot of students. They basically do their own arrangements. Um, in the past few years, we've had students who've done arrangements, acapella arrangements um, for the Herodotones. So that's a pretty, um, pretty popular and well-attended um, event, their concert. Again, that's totally student run. We support them as much as we can, but it's really their it's really their thing. So if you have an idea of something you want to start, go for it, I would say. Um, and if there's ways in which the music department could support that in terms of resources or organization or an advising role or something like that, um, let us know. And we're happy to provide that as well. Awesome. Thank you. Um, kind of jumping backwards a little bit to the questions or to to the topic around the the um, the lessons, music lessons. Um, I have a student here asking if lessons are offered for all types of instruments or just a select few. Um, this particular individual comes from a pretty small town where there are no private lesson opportunities except for um, guitar and piano. And this individual happens to play clarinet, tenor saxophone, and trombone. We would have teachers for all of those. Yeah, for sure. Um, we have pretty much, if you let us know, Portland is a small-ish town, but it's there's a lot of music here and there's a lot of musicians here. Um, so if you let us know what you would like to, um, uh, what you'd like to to learn, uh, let us let us know. I, I had a thesis student many years ago uh, who was interested in sitar. And we found a sitar teacher for them to take um, uh, take sitar. We have we have a drum instructor. We have multiple both voice instructors. We have multiple guitar instructors. You know, I mean, if there's if you literally can't find something, we've harp, harp teachers. So usually we have a stable of people for the stuff that students like. We have a lot of piano teachers. We certainly have a clarinet teacher, John. Um, who runs the jazz ensemble. He does flute and also saxophone as well, too. Um, so we have teachers. But if you let us know, we could probably find a teacher for you. Um, so uh, let us know what, interested, what, what instrument you're interested in. And Monica Ouchi, who's our director of private instructor, instruction, um, will be able to do a little matchmaking and find someone for you. Awesome. I'm going to kind of veer off here. Um, you you brought up a really good point that I think um, no one has asked yet, but I think is a good question that I often hear on the admission side, which is sort of the music program's connection to Portland. You know, how, how entwined are we with the greater city? Um, do students, um, you know, have partner, does the, does the department have partnerships? with organizations outside of the, the campus. Do you mind elaborating a little bit more about that sort of Portland Reed um, cohesiveness? That's a really good question. I think that's something that, that Reed historically could be better at, but is kind of committing itself to doing more community engagement just as an institution. Um, the one good thing about, um, the department. So I think there are, it's a small town, as I mentioned, but people have connections to various ensembles. So Monica Ouchi, the director of private instruction, she's also the runs a contemporary music ensemble uh, called Fear No Music. They do kind of exper not experimental, but contemporary music. Um, and so she's on the lookout for opportunities for students to do stuff. They do a composition program. We had my thesis student, I don't know why all these connections, but she is also interested in composition. She wrote a piece for a class. Monica and Kenji liked it and, and Fear No Music performed it. So that's one example. Um, we have another connection. We have a major chamber music festival that happens on campus every year. It's called Chamber Music Northwest. Um, and it's a summer festival and um, 
Chamber Music Society of New York, they come out here and then they have a summer um, festival for a month and a half or whatever it is um, here on campus. Um, there's often student tickets um, for students to get free tickets. There are also sometimes internship opportunities. Um, so that's a that's an important uh, thing. Call Auditorium, which is our main uh, performance space on campus, um, a lot of groups perform on campus because it's of a size that not a lot of places have. Um, and so lots of performance happening on, on campus. Portland Baroque performs there. Um, Friends of Chamber Music has concerts there. Obviously, Chamber Music, um, Chamber Music Northwest performs there. Um, so there's lots of, there's actually a lot of concerts on campus to check out. Um, the other thing is um, Morgan Luker, our ethnomusicologist, his specialty, air of, of scholarly specialty, is tango music. So he has a tango camp, a camp for tango musicians that happens on campus. I think every, it's every other year now, but it's happening this summer. Um, that's a great opportunity for students and students to participate if they want to learn how to play tango, um, if they want to help out with um, administratively or with uh, um, support of the concerts and the, and the, and the program. So, so yeah, we're always looking for ways, internships or opportunities. We're building those opportunities too, connecting with organizations. So again, it's a situation, I don't think it's anything formalized, but if you let us know what you'd like to do, a student I have right now is interested in doing an internship with an organization in town here um, and Monica is connecting her uh, with that as well too. So um, yeah, let us know your interests if you would like to uh, make connect with um, groups around town and we can probably make that happen. Great, thank you. I'm gonna go back to the, the lessons. Um, a couple, uh, so um, the students a couple questions about instrument lessons. Do these count as an individual class uh, or something extracurricular? And then are they taught by the, the teacher directly or another peer? They're taught by a teacher directly. We have a staff of private instructors. They're all listed on the website as well, too. Um, and the answer to the credit, it's it's it, it depends. You have to enroll to take lessons, but you can take it for no credit or you can take it for credit. Um, so why would someone take it for no credit? Well, sometimes students are at an overload um, or at the maximum units and taking private lessons for credit would put them over. Um, so they just take it for no, no credit. Um, and it shows up on your transcript as you having taken it. Um, but you can also take it for credit, which means you get a grade, um, which means that you have to do some sort of performance at the end. Either um, there's a kind of performance class. So if you want to do something that's a little less high stakes, or perhaps you prepare a piece through lessons and you perform um, uh, at a Friday at four or something like that. So you can decide, um, you can decide whether you do it for credit or no credit. Um, you just have to register um, officially. So we have the numbers of students who are taking it. Thank you. I am a big fan of this next question. Um, you know, in admission, we often talk about read and sort of the overall community. What does that look like? What does the peer community look like in the music department? Um, for this particular student, one of the things that they fell in love with the most when starting music was this sense of family or the sense of community that they share with their bandmates and their director. Yeah, we do try to we do try to cultivate that for sure. Um, I think that you know just playing with people, you kind of build a kind of uh, camaraderie. Um, I think it's something we would we would like to do do more of. Um, in 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 past years, for instance, after the choral concert, everyone would go over. Um, the chorus is open to students, faculty, staff, community members. So there was a staff member at that time who would always host a, a, a post-concert um, reception at her house. Um, and uh, she's retired now, so I don't, I don't think they um, do that now. But there's usually something afterwards, just a, a kind of even a hang after um, 
uh, after concerts. We consider, we do at commencement um, a, a, a special, so there's commencement, people walk across the stage in their caps and gowns, and then we have a reception for music, art, and dance in the uh, music, dance, and theater in the performing arts building um, for all the students, not just majors, but anyone who's kind of been actively involved, people who've been in all the plays, people who've taken dance lessons all the time. So we think of the music department as not just the majors and the faculty, but really all the students who are involved um, uh, involved in music. I think we are kind of committed now to um, kind of building more opportunities for students to get to meet each other, to um, uh, to know each other, to get to hang out. But you're right about the kind of community. And one thing I will say is that because Reed doesn't have sport teams, doesn't have a Greek system, the arts are a really important community building um, endeavor on, on campus. P everyone shows up for the theater concerts, the orchestra and choral concerts are big things that people show up to. So those are really, the, the arts are a really important locus of kind of campus identity and community cohesion. Um, uh, so I, I think, you know, if you're a musician at Reed, you have to play a really key role in kind of cultivating community, not just among musicians, but on the campus as a whole. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I We're getting close to the end. We have about 10 more minutes. So I'm going to jump around um, on the questions here. And if I don't get to your question, um, I'll put the admission inbox uh, email address and you can shoot us an email with your question. Um, what are some of the career paths uh, that have been taken by recent Reed graduates um, who are music majors? So essentially, where do, where do music majors go after their time at Reed? That's a really good question. We just had an external review of our department. We had these three um, faculty members from other institutions come and kind of observe and ask questions. And um, that's a big question. Um, and I think that um, uh, what do students do? All kinds of things. Some students go on and they play in bands and go on tour. Um, we had a former student who teaches middle school music back east. I just had a student who I wrote a letter of recommendation for who applied for a music therapy program um, back east where she lives. Um, uh, I had a student who wrote a thesis many years ago on um, video game music. Um, that was the first thesis on that topic I'd had um, and is now involved in video game design. Um, and so use that thesis as a as a launching point um, for that as well. So we don't, I will say, as have formal kind of professional development stuff in the department. Um, I think we can do more of that. And I think we realize that we do want to do more of that. So for instance, one thing we don't do, but that I think is an aspiration for us to do um, is helping students who are interested in doing music production kinds of things. Um, uh, just, you know, how to, you know, what it, what does it mean to be in the music industry? Historically, Reed has kind of, that, that's not been Reed's jams quite so much, that it, like practical knowledge in terms of professional development, career development stuff. But there is now a Center for Life Beyond Reed, which has been around, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years or so. Um, and they kind of are the clearinghouse for internship opportunities networking um, with uh, alum after you graduate. Um, we Again, we, we think our summer fellowships are useful for that if you want to kind of um, make connections and, and kind of uh, develop skills that perhaps our coursework doesn't prepare you for, but you can um, you can do on your um, do on your own um, as well too. So that's to say that I think that this is something we want to really commit ourselves to. Bora Yoon, who's our composition professor, has been is really committed to that and cultivating. We've also had students going to grad school, a couple who have, I can think of at least at least four or five, a couple in ethnomusicology and some composers uh, who've gone on to conservatory um, or PhD programs to study as well too. So student and some students just want to do music and then go on and do something else um, uh, as, as well too. But um, 
we also have a just the last example I'll give a student who was, I think they were an English major, I'm not sure, but they sang in collegium all four years. They kind of got into keyboard music, harpsichord and organ, um, and learned or took organ lessons while they were at Reed and is now a nurse, a practicing nurse, and on the side has a, a Sunday gig as a church organist, right? So um, so we're really supportive of trying to give students opportunities to to do stuff that'll help them um, feed their um, feed their hunger for whatever they wanna do professionally after read. I love to hear that, thank you. Um, I'm gonna combine two questions here. So um, does Reed have like an instrument loan program uh, or are students expected to have the instruments ahead of time um, or, or can Reed loan those instruments to students? What kind of instruments can they borrow from the institution if there is some sort of loan program? Um, and then sort of concurrently to that question, what if there's a student who maybe is has interest in taking, or, you know, learning a specific instrument, but has has ever tried it before and kind of wants to just feel it out? Um, you know, is that a possibility for them to borrow an instrument and and sort of feel it out before committing to that? Yeah, um, I would say yes to both questions. We do have instruments that we loan to students. Um, we have lockers here um, on on um, in this building. This is the Performing Arts Building um, where you can store your instrument. So if you have your own instrument and bring it to campus and don't want to keep your don't want to keep your cello in your uh, in your in your um, in your dorm room, we do have storage limited, but storage areas for that. Um, we do have a limited but but ample number of instruments that we can uh, loan students that happens that happens all the time. Um, and yeah, I would say if you want to test drive an instrument, like maybe one thing you can do is um, uh, as part of the admissions process, I don't know if they started this program yet. I hope they have because it sounds great um, where you can take a sample lesson with a teacher. So let's say you play violin and you come in. Um, Dev, you may know better than I whether they're actually doing this now, but I know Million and Monica have been talking about that. So say when you do your campus visit, you want to just kind of test drive a teacher um, and just see what a lesson with a teacher feels like um, uh, with our violin or viola teacher or whatever um, and do that as well too. So yeah, so we're happy to help you if you want to think about, hmm, I'm interested, I'm kind of interested in clarinet, but is it, should I do the, you know, I don't know, should I take piano lessons instead? We're happy to work with you in thinking in thinking through that because we, we love beginners. We love, there are people who start here as beginners and by the time they graduate are actually pretty competent um, performers on their instrument. Great. Yeah, we do have a class visit program that students can participate in. I'm wondering if that's what that is a reference to. Unless it's I think it's something separate. The class, yeah, class visit, and that's another thing too. You can always sit in on music classes when you come. I think there's they may be still hashing out the details of the lesson mm -hmm. um, program, but that's that's definitely coming. Great, great, awesome. Um, the next question is around like uh. Ensemble traveling. Do do the ensembles travel and perform elsewhere? And um, also to that question, are there music focused study abroad opportunities? Oh, two really good questions. Um, uh, I would say to the first question, I would say largely no. Um, I think um, I know a few years ago the choral director did some things where they took the choir to perform at various places. I know Shohei has the aspiration of doing that more, having the choir, because, you know, you work all semester on repertory and then you just have one concert and you're done. So it'd be nice to have opportunities to, to perform those. Um, Collegium always sings at, at commencement. So that's kind of the, the chamber choir. Um, that's, that's a kind of standing tradition. But in terms of actual tours, not so much, not so much. It has happened in the past, but that was the exception, and I think proves the rule that our ensembles don't. It doesn't mean that they won't or they couldn't, um, but historically that hasn't um, that hasn't happened um, as much. Um, the other part of your what was the the second question, Dev? 
uh, study abroad opportunities for oh these- yeah yeah you know there 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 are um yes there are students have there was a jazz p- drummer several years ago who did a study abroad in Berlin um most of them are not doing it for performance they're doing it for academic credit um um for instance one student now is going to Vienna next semester. Uh, we'll be taking music classes. We'll be taking art history classes as well too. Um, but um, that's not. Um, I'm sure those opportunities exist, but students haven't done it as much. We've recently loosened things up so it's easier to do study abroad because for a long time it was very difficult to do study abroad in certain departments because um, uh, um, the junior qualifying exam is in the junior year. The junior seminar, if the department has that in the junior year, so and that junior year is usually when people do study abroad, sophomore junior year. So there is more opportunities to do study abroad, which is great. Um, and um, there's a study abroad office that might be a really good place to ask um, the the Alberto and the study abroad office what opportunities for performance there are within that program. Yeah, and I, I work with Alberto very closely. Um, uh, I, I work primarily with international students. And so um, Alberto, Gwen in International Student Services, and I have a, a regular uh, monthly check-in where um, he, he's often adding more and more um, opportunities for students to study abroad, more partnerships, more uh, course opportunities. So it is definitely something that has expanded quite a bit in the last few years. So. Um, Great. Well, we are at the end of our hour. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to Mark. I appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your day to to meet with us and tell us a little bit more about the music program and and what students can expect in this major. Um, To the folks that attended the session and asked questions in the chat, thank you all for your your phenomenal questions. It really made for, uh, it made my job easy. I didn't have to come up with questions and and, uh, uh, you all asked some really, really great questions. Um, Thank you all so much for attending. And um, if you missed something in this, uh, we'll be posting this to the Read YouTube page here um, within the next week or so. And I just put my email in the in the chat as well, too. So if you have questions that you want, feel free to just shoot me an email. um, If you if we didn't get to one of your questions or you wanted to follow up on one of the ones that were asked, uh, don't don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to answer any questions about the department. Great. Thanks so much, Mark. Appreciate you doing that. All right. Awesome, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you.